Melissa, can you share a little bit more about your grocery shopping? Like, where do you shop? How do you store stuff? Let's talk a little bit about that in this video. Hello friends, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna go over a little bit about how we shop, where we shop, what we buy, and how we store it. But before we begin, as always, don't forget we've got 40% off any or all of our recipe ebooks. There's over 700 oil-free raw vegan recipes in those ebooks. So please go check it out, get that 40% off using code rawfood40. <laughs> the link is in the description box or it's right here on the screen. Our little kitty here is distracting me a little bit. So let's chat about where we shop, what we buy, how we store, that kind of thing. So Nate and I shop at a few stores. <laughs> we shop at mostly Winco and Costco. No, not everybody has a Winco. I know there's a few in Oregon. There aren't many here in Las Vegas. So they're pretty sporadic. It's kind of like a Walmart style of grocery store, but they have a lot of great prices. So we do shop at Winco. They have the best prices on bulk foods, like nuts and seeds, nutritional yeast, those kinds of things we do buy more often at Winco. But Costco is where we go for a lot of things like our lemons, our limes, our dates. We do get lettuce there and other vegetables. <laughs> uh, I like to sometimes buy the big bags of asparagus where I will just chop them up when we get home and put them in the freezer so that I can add them to my raw soups, raw chilies, raw marinated veggies, that kind of thing. So Costco is a really great place that we like to shop at. Um, they do have the wild brine sauerkraut, which we use quite often. So we've been buying that there, but it's not always the same stuff. Like sometimes they'll stop selling certain things that we buy, but for the most part, we like Costco for the more bulk items, big bags of oranges, um, the Tuscan melons are really good and we've been buying a lot of organic yellow nectarines there because they have just been fabulous this year. So we've been buying those often there. Peaches sometimes, the mangoes are pretty good and a lot of the produce is organic. We don't get our bananas there because we can get them cheaper at Winco, but those are the top two main places that we go. Then kind of tied with those two is La Bonita. It's a Mexican market, supermarket here in Las Vegas. I'm not sure if there are any outside of the Vegas area. I don't know, but we love going to La Bonita because they have probably the best price on produce in the city that we've noticed. Obviously, there are some stores that have cheaper things here or there, but for the most part, La Bonita has some of the best sales. Like right now, you can get five Atolfo mangoes for a dollar, which is pretty rare. I've never seen them that price before. So when they are that price, we stock up. We will buy 60 mangoes for 12 bucks or what have you. Sometimes we've bought a hundred mangoes when they're really good, but they have very, very good prices. It's worth it to check around because we didn't go to La Bonita when we first moved here. We just went to Winco because we know and loved Winco. We, we just go to Costco, but we never explored some of the other stores that are here. It's really good to explore stores outside of your comfort zone to see what kind of sales that they might have and what kind of produce that they have because you never know. So we didn't go to La Bonita until our friend John Kohler told us about this epic sale that they had on, I can't even remember what it was, but we went in there and we're like, why aren't we shopping here? <laughs> so we actually go to La Bonita fairly often on our little route of stores. We'll hit Costco, we'll go to Winco, we'll go to La Bonita. We also shop at a store called 99 Ranch. That is an Asian market. We also shop at International Marketplace, another Asian market. And that's where we have found an organic low sodium miso that we really enjoy as well. So it's definitely worth it to shop around and see what stores have to offer because you will be able to find more variety of foods by shopping around and you're gonna find epic sales on stuff. Like if we had never gone to International Marketplace, I never would have known that they sell some 
Artichokes or Jerusalem Artichoke for the cheapest price that we can find in the city. And they are also the freshest. So now we know to go to International Marketplace to get Sunchokes specifically. So that's our store for Sunchokes in the winter, kind of early spring and our miso paste. So that's basically you gotta go to multiple stores if you wanna get a good variety. And also we do sometimes shop at Cardenas or Mariana's, um, two other uh, Mexican markets and also 99 cent only. It's a dollar store that has produce. We went in there one day and saw that they had a bunch of produce and a lot of it was organic, which was like, crazy we could get a whole head of cauliflower for 99 cents it was nuts so sometimes we'll stop in there and see what kind of sales they have and i feel like it's a lot of extra produce maybe the ugly produce that other stores didn't want so it ends up at the dollar store of all places but we have shopped there as well definitely worth it to shop around so once we purchase all of our stuff, we bring it into our unit. We live in a high rise in Las Vegas. So having a cart big enough to have all our stuff in it is amazing. It helps us to only have one big giant load when we come up the elevator and it's a lot easier to maneuver around instead of trying to carry a whole bunch of bags. We have cooler bags that we got at Costco a couple of years ago. I don't know if they still sell them or if they will, but we found these epic black cooler bags that fit a lot of food. So we'll put our food in there to keep it at least sort of cool in the desert heat, but we'll have those. We also bring our own bags as much as possible. So any bags that we do have like in our fridge or what have you are reused. We try to reuse all the bags that we have as often as we possibly can. I know it's in pretty much impossible to avoid all plastics, but we do try our best. And then once we bring it upstairs, then I will start washing certain things like nectarines, our tomatoes, bell peppers, those kinds of things. I will start washing grapes and berries also are really great to start washing so that I have them ready to go for our snacks. And I'll use the Norwax fruit and veg wash, but you can also use baking soda, vinegar, any other kind of wash that you wanna use. It's totally your prerogative. But I like to wash nectarines and peaches and plums, things like that when I bring them into the house because those are fruit fly prone fruits. And it also helps them to last longer as well. So I will soak the nectarines and the tomatoes right away in the Norwex fruit and veggie wash and then I rinse them, maybe wash them a little bit. I'll also do things like radishes and beets and anything else that needs to be washed. I'll wash that before it goes on the counter or in the fridge. So when it comes to storing our food, we follow along with the lead of the grocery store. So in the grocery store, you might notice that some things live on tables and other things live in coolers. So the grocery store knows best how to keep things as fresh as possible. So we can take their lead and do the same in our house. So things like apples, bananas, avocados, tomatoes, pears, all of the fruit that is just sitting there on the tables, you can have it live on your counter. And we have our fruit counter with bananas. We try to have like green bananas and yellow bananas and spotted bananas, kind of a rotation through. So we never have like a whole bunch of spotted ones and then no green ones. So I, we try to keep it in a rotation. So we always have ripe bananas and we keep our mangoes, our nectarines, our dragon fruits, our pears and oranges and grapefruits and all kinds of fruits on the counter. They are much better on the counter. They ripen better on the counter, especially if you have apples. I find if there's apples in around the other stuff, if we have those, everything ripens a lot faster as well. So if you're looking to ripen stuff, have some apples around too. And the only fruit that we really keep in the fridge are things like berries and grapes. That's pretty much it. Anything that's gonna go bad pretty fast, we'll keep in the fridge. And as for the fridge, that's where we keep our vegetables and our greens. So celery, greens, all kinds of greens, you name it. We've got our carrots and our sprouts. Like once they are finished sprouting on the counter, we move them into the fridge. 
So we keep all the vegetables in the fridge and we keep all the fruit pretty much on the counter, um, including like avocados as well and the garlic and onions too, lemons and limes. We keep all of that on the counter and then we just grab from it when we need it. As for cost, it really depends. So many factors come into play when it comes to cost. And I get asked quite often, how much is it to eat raw? It really depends on where you live, what kind of stores you have available, if you're eating all organic or not, if you are eating out of season or not, if you are going to the farmer's markets or not. Everything can be either super expensive or pretty cheap. It really depends on what you're buying. On average though, Nate and I spend between 700 and 800 USD a month in groceries. It could be less as well um, if we didn't buy a lot of more expensive things. Like for example, the nectarines, you could get, they're like a dollar each and we buy a lot. <laughs> I think we spent $40 on nectarines yesterday at Costco, but we also get 60 mangoes for $12. So it kind of balances it out. Um, if we didn't have the money, obviously we wouldn't eat and choose as many nectarines as we did, but the season is very short and nectarines are my absolute favorite fruit in the entire world next to mango. So when they're on sale and when they're really good and they're organic, I'm going to buy them. I'm going to spend the money on them. So sometimes we spend more money and sometimes we spend less money. It also depends on if you buy organic or not. So I did a video about our salads that we got from La Bonita. Again, La Bonita is the cheapest place to buy produce here in Las Vegas that we have found. And we ended up making two salads that came to $4.34 each two massive salads with lettuce and bell pepper and tomatoes and mangoes and avocado and cilantro, cucumber. We made these big giant salads for so cheap. But if we were to have gone to Whole Foods or say Sprouts or Trader Joe's, we probably would have spent three or four, maybe even five times the amount of money on one salad. So it really depends on where you're shopping and if you're buying all organic or not. The question, do Nate and I eat only organic? No, we do not. We would rather have variety and abundance than to force ourselves into only organic box. Like we do buy organic. We're not anti-organic at all, but we're also pro-conventional. If you're going to save money and if you're going to be able to eat massive salads and you're gonna be able to afford it, then go conventional. Eat organic when it makes sense, when you're able to, when it looks good, when it's well-priced. Get organic when you can, not because you have to. I feel a lot of people shy away from some of the conventional things that you can't even get in organics. Like I can't find certain things in organics that I personally want to consume. Like I do sometimes find organic sunchokes but for the most part, they're like two or three times more expensive than the conventional ones, which happen to be fresher than the organic ones. The organic ones, because they're so expensive, they tend to sit around, they get soft, they sometimes have mold on them, and I don't wanna eat that, and I'm not gonna spend the money on it. So I'm going to go with the more inexpensive one that is fresher, and they taste better too. So it really depends. And again, I'm not anti-organic. I, I will buy organic if it makes sense, if it's there, if it's great. Like for example, the nectarines that I love, they're, they happen to be organic. I feel like we're accidental organic buyers. Like if it's there and it's organic, we'll buy it, it's great. But we don't go out of our way specifically to buy all organic. And that is how we save a lot of money um, eating raw. And again, we do shop at Whole Foods for certain things that we can't find at say Winco or La Bonita, like radicchio, endive, golden beets, dandelion leaves, sometimes purple kale. There's a lot of foods that I can't find in a conventional grocery store or at the Asian markets. So I'll go to Whole Foods to grab those. But again, uh, we spend so much money at Whole Foods. It's crazy. Like I just get a couple things and it's the same price as if I bought three times the amount of food at say Winco. So again, 
It really depends on where you're at, what your finances look like, what your budget looks like, how abundant you want to eat, that kind of thing will come into play when deciding how much you are spending on your food every month and what you splurge on. Obviously, we splurge on stuff sometimes. <laughs> if there's like a meme sapote and it's like $8, we'll get it. I bought a soursop the other day for $8. <laughs> One sour sop, it was crazy. But again, we save money on other things, so we have a little leeway to buy more expensive things. But if you're just buying all kinds of tropical fruits and expensive stuff, yeah, it's gonna be more expensive, especially if they're organic. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you liked it, please click like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get notifications for more. You can click the little bell. And also don't forget that we've got 40% off any or all of our recipe eBooks. You can find the link right here on the screen or in the description box below, along with the links to all of our print versions, which are available on Amazon. So until the next video, guys, I love you all and fruit on. Thank you.